Welcome to Boundless Pursuit, a weekly podcast providing motivation, entertainment, and education to anglers and outdoorsmen. I hope that the stories you'll find here will encourage you to chase your passion more fervently, to open your mind to new opportunities and perspectives. Your engagement and feedback is critical to the growth of this show, and I would love to hear your suggestions on topics or potential guests. You can reach me at boundlesspursuitfishing at gmail.com or at my website, www.boundless-pursuit.com. That's where you'll find all related articles, media, and merchandise. Please remember, the show will gain traction from your support. Be sure to like, comment, and share this podcast to your friends and connections. I'm your host, David Graham. Now let's get on to today's episode. You know, as anglers at our core, we all have that interest in the big one. And as human beings, we're drawn to the idea of monsters from an early age. And our imagination tells us that those monsters thrive in those tucked away, dark, hidden places. In the closet, under your bed, the trolls that live under the bridges, and those beasts that live in the caves. As people and as anglers, we are stimulated by the thought of monsters unknown. And that creature that goes bump in the night. And while monsters may not be real, the Goliath grouper is. That is the monster that lives under the bridge. That is the monster that lives in those dark, tucked away places. Growing upwards of 500 pounds, the Goliath grouper can eat most people's personal best fish like jelly beans. It is the quintessential monster fish. And if that's so, you can call today's guest a monster slayer. Gavin Schultz is a thrill-seeking young angler with a real knack for chasing these giant fish, and he does it from land. I came across images of Gavin on Instagram, photo after photo of him taking down these absolute beast fish. I have a personal interest in chasing Goliaths from the beach. It's something that I love to do personally. It's something I've written about, so I knew that this would be a fun conversation. And Gavin is just another one of those South Florida wild boys keen on catching the biggest fish that he can find from shore, and he is damn good at it. If you like big fish, the Goliath grouper is aptly named. It doesn't get much bigger. And Gavin brings a lot of knowledge and experience to their pursuit and into this conversation. I think a lot of people don't realize just how accessible these giant fish can be from shore. A lot of folks think Goliath grouper is one of those fish you have to be way out offshore, over a wreck, in a boat, over deep water. And while sometimes that may be the case, Under the right conditions and the right circumstances, you can catch these fish relatively close to shore. You can catch them with your feet buried in the sand. And Gavin's Instagram is proof of that. He brings a lot of knowledge into this conversation, a lot of experience for how you can do it. And if you just like a big fish story, it really doesn't get all that much bigger. This is a really cool conversation with a young dude chasing monster fish. And I think you're going to like this one. This is Gavin Schultz. All right. So we'll pretty much just jump right in, but uh, glad you were able to get a little bit of an extra nap in because I guess you you were out fishing last night. I mean, how how late were you out? Uh, I went over to the the east coast of Florida. It was like three hours away, and we we got out there about sunset and fished till like 5 a.m., but, you know, no sleep all night. (laughs) It catches up. You got to sleep at some point. So how much sleep are you operating on right now? Uh, I got like a three and a half hour nap. Oh my between, gosh. Between like one and now. Are you so, a big energy drink guy? Did you pound any like five hour energies not, or anything? Last night I did. Yeah. I do like my energy drinks on the beach. They keep me going. Right. Yeah. <laughs> keep me from falling asleep. Yeah. You definitely need those. They well, help. I guess the most important question is what did you catch? Anything other than. We did get a, a really a nice bull shark. Oh, that's so, cool. Okay. Yeah. We were hoping for something a little nicer, but that's better, better than, than nothing. Better than making that three hour drive to go get skunked. So yeah. I've been I've been there. Then yeah. you make that then you make that drive a shame back. Yeah, I was yeah. over on the East Coast this weekend, but I wasn't trying to catch I, w- I was a little bit trying to catch sharks, but I went over there to meet up with this uh you know uh David Rocca, do you follow him? Yeah, the, he 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 knows you. All those big jacks, yeah. The big jacks, yeah. Yeah. So that, I've been following him for a while and I'm like I'm like, man, I wanna go I wanna go do that like 
yeah. slinging those big plugs for Jack. Yeah, so he I just, does a GT style. That's dope. Yeah, it's awesome. No, no one else does that. that. That's what I like about it. I that. know. That's what's cool. And I, I had him on yeah. here because I was like, dude, it's so weird because in Florida, especially where like everybody, everybody else is a fisherman, mm-hmm. for you to be like the only guy that does anything is rare. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, not that cool. there aren't people, that, not that there aren't other guys doing it, but it's like, it's hard to be the guy of something in Florida yeah. where it's like, yeah. it's just too many. But uh, yeah, I've been wanting to go over there and link up with him for a while. But he was he was working late, so I was just out there kind of like blind casting, hoping for the yeah. best. And I didn't know what I was doing. I casted for hours and hours and hours. I got like one questionable bite on like the backside of a breaker, but yeah. I, I I think it was a shark because I saw brown where I saw like dark. And You're using one uh, of those big poppers. Yeah, I used a big yeah. old giant, the big old giant poppers. But um, nice. but then he showed up and we did a little bit, but. I don't know. We just couldn't get into the jacks, but I did get a big black tip on the popper, which, you know, I never caught a shark on an artificial, yeah. so that was kind of yeah. cool. But I haven't done that either. That's pretty cool. It was. It was cool, but we were on the jetties, so I have no photos to show for it. Yeah. It was like... No, no fun way to land that one. No, it was hell. It was <laughs> It was a lot of fun, though. It was kind of a fun, like, introductory, because, you know, I, didn't, I don't know. I, I don't do much jetty fishing, but we were on, like, the, you know, as the jetty... You know, the further down the jetty goes, like the surface of this thing was like skating on ice. It's like covered yeah. in moss. So we're slipping around and he's got he has one pair of like cleated boots, you know, so you can stick like with the spikes on the bottom. All right. He's like, yeah. All right, so so you wear one boot and I wear the other boot. I mean it's just ghetto as hell. Like I got one <laughs> good I got one good boot, he's got one good boot. Hey, he tried he tried to make it work for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then um this damn thing, I mean it smash this popper right right at the jetties and it's heading into the rocks and i'm doing everything i can to stop it but it's like you know when you really crank down on it then you got to plant your feet i got one good foot my other foot's slipping around and he's sitting there holding on to me so i don't fall i'm I'm like this damn this sucks like this is a lot of work for a freaking black tip but it was cool and then um i don't know i mean you know how it is it's like you just can't be an idiot. It was like, if we sit here and screw around trying to take pictures, the fish is going to die. Yeah, like I had to like yeah. rappel down this jetty, get down into the rocks. I'm like holding yeah. this That's black, black tip. tip too. Doesn't yeah. freak out. When you, mm. Oh yeah. Well, it's got treble hooks we, all in its face too. And then I yeah. have it, it like at my groin, like in between my legs pushed up against the jetty. I'm like, this ain't no way to not a good situation. Play no. around and get castrated <laughs> by a black tip. Yeah. But, not the uh, way to do it. <laughs> yeah, so I had to make that. I wasn't about to drive home late though. I just pulled over on on Alligator Alley at one of them rest stops. And oh took yeah, a, I just slept there in my Jeep. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, this ain't about me. This is about you. And uh, well, that's cool. You were you were just out there doing it. But um, uh, so your stuff though that like really interested me. Like I love the shark stuff. I've had a couple of land based shark guys come on. But for you, it's like I don't know, dude. I'm like all about these Goliaths. Like I've only lived in Florida for going on five years. Yeah. And like, that was one of the fish when I moved out here that I really wanted to catch. But you know, I was th- sitting here thinking you got to be in a boat. You got to be like fishing wrecks. And like, you know, I didn't know anything about them. And then, you know, I, I kind of got turned on to the idea of catching them from land. And it just seems like such a more unique spin on it. And then I see your page and dude, you seem like you've just got them like dialed in. So I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess just tell me, Tell me how you got into that scene. Yeah, uh, we get we get a lot of them over here. Uh, just while we're shark fishing, and you know they just pick up our baits. But um, I, uh, we have a certain spot we go to that they're just that they pretty much just stack up in. And generally, like in the winter months, like in the cooler months, like now, you could count on at least one Goliath every night. You know, you yeah. go out there. <laughs> we, we're just using you know little small baits. Most people think you know you're catching Goliaths. You need a giant bait. We're using baits that are. You know, all like three to four inches long, little cuts of mullet and like ladyfish and stuff like that. That's interesting. Well, I I kind of fall into that category of the people that use. Well, I usually use like a whole mullet is what I've been using, yeah. but it's probably more so because it's such an easy bait to get a hold of. Yeah. But um, everything eats it. Um, I mean, most of the Goliaths I catch, like the big ones, are really small baits. Yeah. Is that like a recent thing? I mean, like I I scrolled through your page and got all the way down to the bottom where it looks like you were doing a little more the the smallmouth thing. We may get into a discussion about that yeah. as well. But like some point you graduate from smallmouth bass to like it's got ironically a Goliath almost looks like a giant like 
Yeah, it pretty much is. Enormous small. smallmouth. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but just I don't know, dude. Just like tell me about like how you got to the point of where you're. I don't know. I don't know if you're necessarily even fishing yeah. for them, or are you just happening to catch yeah. them while you're shark fishing. Um. Well, we catch a lot just while shark fishing, but there is certain times, you know, like you could generally go to like any bridge in Florida, you know, put down a bait, good chance you're going to get smacked by a Goliath. You know, they're pretty much everywhere. Right. But, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't really, I didn't really get, um, when I first moved here, I wasn't aware that, you know, the Goliaths would come in that close to shore. I always thought it was an offshore fish as well. You know, like you'd have to go on a boat and get out on the wreck and fish for them. And, you know, I used to always watch the videos. I'm like, dude, how do these guys even reel these things in? Or, you know, you got, you've seen the videos of the black yeah, yeah. baits, all the big muscle dudes on the boat. They're in there right. cranking these glides <laughs> up and they're looking like they're about to freaking pass out or something. Yeah. But it's really not that difficult from the shore. Oh, I know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But it, it's more enjoyable for sure. I can, yeah. I can, I can attest to that because, yeah, it seems like when they're able to pull down, it's like you've got to like, Good luck. Dude. Yeah, you yeah. you gotta like deal with that in your back, but it's like it's so yeah. much better. I don't know from the beach because you're like you know it's pulling yeah. out and just across, mm -hmm. so it's like yeah. a, it's like a little bit better. But and, and a lot of people picture you know like you use like you need like a big eighty wide or a big fifty wide or something to crank them in. Most of the, most of these glides we catch off the beach, we're using like uh, I, I use like Avid, like LX, like HXW, so like four out size, you know, conventional reels. Or I, we, I even catch big ones on uh, I have like a twelve foot surfer. I was just like an eight thousand spinning reel. Yeah, it's yeah, enough, I saw that. You know? I saw the I saw the pictures with the spinning gear. I'm like, oh man, I gotta ask about that one because that's like a different. Yeah. That's like a different spin on all of this. But um, yeah, because that was yeah. kind of what I was curious about. It's sort of like your approach to finding them i mean i i i agree it seems like down here and i'm in southwest florida as well i'm down in naples but it's yeah. like it seems like almost every bridge you look for every pass every bridge near a pass yeah um they're all at least some goliaths on them but Pretty uh much. but it, it's like it's also a lot of times kind of hard to find access to a beach where you can like angle out but like just tell yeah. me like your approach like when you find a good bridge how are you deciding like where to set up are you like kind of like paddling out at an angle are you in line with the bridge i mean um or assume it's it even a bridge or if you've got yeah. rock piles or whatever you're doing yeah i mean you generally goliaths are always going to be close to some type of structure and uh Usually when you hook one on the beach, they, they know where they want to go to get away. And sometimes they do, and you just can't do nothing about it. All right. <laughs> but, you know, uh, you know, you still get some in, though, for sure. Right. But, so so if, when if you're, you're like, um, when you're, when you're, are you, uh, are you usually like kayaking the bait out? Yeah. Other than I'm, when you're surf casting, obviously. But I think more often than not, you're probably using conventional gear. Are yeah. Yeah. I like the conventional gear because it takes too long on the spinning reel. <laughs> yeah. The but uh, yeah, I use conventional gear and like say we, we, I usually like when we set up on the beach, you know, put our pipes in, spread them out a little bit. We use uh, like these big sand anchors to keep our bait down. I mean, you had uh, that terra firma tackle guy on here, you know, like his, mm -hmm. his anchors he makes for yeah. uh, like shark fishing. Yeah, because that's what I was curious about is like the kind like of rigging. Rapper. Yeah, because I was so, curious about like the yeah. sort of rigs that you prefer. Because obviously, you know the nature of chasing the Goliaths is like you're you're going to be near structure, like you're yeah. gonna be like almost in the structure. Yeah. So it's like you got to kind of have a rig that can contend with. I don't and know. Rub, yeah, you yeah, the current moving around. Yeah, and rubbing against pilings, if heaven forbid they get in that. But like yeah. I don't know, just kind of walk me through like what you like what your what your whole setup looks like from the rod to the reel, which you already kind of uh, alluded yeah. to the reel, but like even from the spool all the way to the hook, like what does the progression of your rig look like from leader material yeah. to the size hook so, and everything? Uh, generally on like those lighter, like four out size conventional setups I was telling you about, like something big enough that you could cast with. So you don't always have to kayak, which is also a good thing. It gives you yeah. versatility there. You don't have to kayak the bait, like with a big, big reel. But uh, I usually do like a 80 pound braid, like backing all the way through, and then pr throw on like 150 yards or 200 yards of like 80 pound top shot. Okay. Mono. And that's usually all right. And then I do like this time of year, 
Um, I always like to have my shark leaders like as long as I would expect the shark to catch up, uh, on it. Cause you know, the, you know, the tail, the whip it with the tail. Smacking like, it, yeah. It. Yeah. So like this time of year, like when we have all the sandbar sharks around here, they're all like six to seven feet. So I got like six to seven feet of, uh, 400 pound mono. And then I got that to a swivel and then probably like a foot and a half of like 300 pound wire. And then I, I, I don't use very big hooks. I, I use like uh 12 aught to 14 aught just smaller you know more low-key um hooks yeah yeah because that's what i was kind of curious if you're like going after the goliaths are you using wire or are you just doing straight mono i know some people do a little bit I, of both I use but... wire because i always you know if i get a if a shark bite you know in case of the sharks yeah, <laughs> yeah and they don't care about the wire i mean i catch giant tarpon on shark rigs with full wire and everything they eat the same thing yeah, you know? yeah, I'd seen your tarpon photos, and I want to get into that a little bit because I'm like, man, is he, he must be like getting these on, like, shark baits or something. But um, stuff. same stuff. <laughs> now, when you're when you're sending baits out, are you usually doing cut bait? Do you ever try live bait or like what we is you like? Uh, are you pretty get... indiscriminate about like the species of fish you're using for bait, or if you found like the Goliaths kind of per- have like a real that, preference well, for? There's kind of like certain times of the year you want to use certain things, you know? So like around Christmas time down here, New Year's, we get like our big mullet run. Mm-hmm. And that time of year, you know, you go out and you could throw the net and you could catch like, you know, coolers full of mullet. Right. And so <laughs> whenever we were catching them like that, we were catching them good enough that we could, you know, hey, we'll hook one on, put them out live, see what happens. But you don't really need to do that. They eat the dead bait better and the live bait moves around and you get more problems that way, you know? Right. Yep. Yep. They'll find their way into the hiding oh, yeah. spots. Yeah. Your yeah. damn live. Your bait wants to hide. I'd always wondered about the this, this just obnoxious amount of catfish around here. I'm like, uh, I gotta find a use for these little bastards. Have you? I mean, have you tried the catfish? Yes, I have seen people use them on bridges uh, for Goliaths. Like they'll go out and catch like, a couple hard head. I've even seen sail cats get eaten, but leaving live ones, hook them through the nose, throw them on a bridge piling, and I've seen people just don't. You know, they yeah. sometimes it seems like catch, maybe uh, the people catch tarpon on like cut catfish. I've heard of that. Right. Yeah. I've heard that, too. I don't I'd always wondered if people were just trying to get me to go away when they say that whole catfish yeah. tail thing for tarpon. But yeah. you hear it enough times. It's like, OK, there must be something to this. Yeah. But man, the catfish around here just drive me nuts. I'm like, ah, I don't to figure out a use for these little bastards. And then I've caught a few of the juvenile grouper around Naples in the mangroves and stuff. And it's like every other one spits up a half-eaten catfish. So I'm like, okay, yeah. well, surely the big ones are eating it too. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's interesting. So it's like, you know, I don't know. I guess uh, it seems like the most important thing when you're tying into these things is probably more drag capacity or yeah so uh i use uh like avid like the raptor series reel so they give out a little more drag uh but like i said like with those conventionals versus the spinning reel it's going to take you about 15 to 20 minutes to get them in on the conventional and then (laughs) my spinning reel setup you got at least an hour hour and a half like because you just don't get you don't got the leverage you know yeah can't really then you just gotta hope that they're swimming away from the yeah make sure the structure i guess Gotta get a little lucky. Yeah, that's nuts. So it's like I that's not really an option. Usually I I do a lot of mine around like Sanibel or other areas where a lot of times mm-hmm. I'm paddling a hundred yards. So it's like spin gear is just not it yeah. ain't happening. But uh mm-hmm. and I don't know your opinion on it. Like you know, you watch those videos to your point, like it looks like this intense, amazing fight, like where it's just like giving you everything you want. And it's like, I don't know, from the beach, it's like I know it was like the sharks are way more of an exciting fight, but it's just like, yeah. I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's how cool the photos are. But, uh, you know, I know too, that like when it comes to the Goliaths, there's like, there's a sort of like responsibility as a sportsman or a proper angler to, to use proper fish handling skills, but yeah. it's also like a tremendously powerful animal. So like when you're bringing these things up into the shallows, like do you have sort of like, you know, I know every responsible land-based guy seems to have like their program in place for like having your gear ready for what you got to do to re- get a quick yeah. release, get your photos in. Like, just walk me through your process when you've hooked so, one of these things and you're yeah. bringing it to the beach. Yeah, so these guys uh, that we catch off the beach, just about every one of them, once you get them like coming in, about to beach them, they float up. Yep. <laughs> so they're just like, and they float right in. And 
I pretty much just go up. Uh, they have like this little bone thing. I would I don't know how to describe it. It's like part of their jaw. And I grab them by that because there's. I don't like grabbing them by the gills because they got sharp gill records and, you know, it's not good for the gills anyways. And they got really sharp teeth, which uh, I found that out early on. You can't yeah. lift them fast. No, no. Uh, I made uh, the mistake, too. Even with gloves, the first one I caught I was out, when I was out uh, solo, I had some gloves on. I'm like, this will be all right. Oh, yeah. That sucker clamped down and started like going like this and just buzz sawed straight through the like gloves. A bunch, little, bunch of little needles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so, um, what was, I, what was I saying again? So, um, oh, when we landed them. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, when we land them, they pretty much float in. I grab them. I just pop the hook out. And, and the spot we go to, it's generally like a, just a little bit of uh, water on the beach, you know, that you could like let him sit in so he's not all the way out of the water. It's yeah, not good yeah. to take the big ones all the way out because I've seen people like they take them all the way out and then they put them back and the things he's like floating around, kind of just taking a sec. Like he can't get his buoyancy back, you know, to go back down. Right. But generally, they're very hardy fish. They're not like they don't they don't die on you, you know. Like yeah. you, you, there, you post them up, take a picture with them, and they <laughs> they they fly off. They do. Yeah, because so, I've done a little bit of it with them, and I sort of found the same thing. It's like. You kind of have to find that like happy medium between getting them like up shallow enough to where I don't know you can handle them and you know if you're able to get photos do it, but also yeah. not doing something illegal and drawing negative attention. Um, yeah. But then I I know I had another situation with one one time where I was out there by myself and I I tried to handle them in like thigh deep water, and like mm -hmm. like you were describing, you know they roll over and they're sort of like catatonic. As soon yeah. as I rolled this thing back upright, it was like that sucker woke up. It yeah. was like waking up an angry grizzly bear. And when it decided it wanted to get away from me, I, you know, you, you ain't stopping them. Couldn't do nothing. And no. it shook loose from me and overpowered me. And my rig had gotten like wrapped around my leg. This damn thing oh, was no. like pulling me out there. Oh, God. So it's like you have to like find that happy medium between yeah. like your own safety and then the safety of the fish. But yeah, it's mm -hmm. interesting. I'm always like interested, like people's. I don't know, program for making sure you're getting in there and getting out of there quickly and moving and moving fast because, you know, that's especially, I'd say even more so than the sharks. It's like one of those beloved fish by like the local people. Mm -hmm. And if if your photos get out there and they look a certain sort of way, you might get yeah. a knock on the door. Yeah, you do anything wrong nowadays and you put it on Instagram, they'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they'll let you know. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, are, are you getting out there with, like, it, for me, it's always been one of those fish that has generated, like, a lot of buzz. Like, it's like if I put those photos out there, like, everybody, like, you know, it gets, yeah, it gets generally, everybody loves to see a, a picture of a big goliath. It's just, it, it's exciting for people. They yeah. just, they, like, I love bringing people out. I've never seen it before because their first reaction is, I mean, it's always priceless, you know? All right. Seeing, a, <laughs> seeing something like that doesn't even look real for the first time, you know? It's it's one of those funny fish too, to where it's like, I don't know. I feel like it's one of those ones. This now this will be a fun side of the conversation because it's like, I've noticed it's one of those fish that is just like surrounded by different opinions. Like there's two different yeah. sides of like people who think they're eating everything in their path and they're detrimental to other other fish around, and other people think that they're, you know, maybe not yeah. as crazy voracious as they seem. I know, like for me. Like the Sanibel Causeway, I'll I'll fish there a lot. And yeah. dude, there is a Goliath on every single one of those pilings. There isn't a single piling that doesn't have one. Like you, if you drop an underwater camera down there, yeah. they are there. But you can also go out there at any point during the day or night and drop baits. You may have to sit there for six, yeah. seven, eight hours with no bite. So I'm like, okay, yeah. well, I mean, hell, are these things really that stupid? I mean, I know there's a Goliath down there. That yeah. sees this bait and is not eating it, but it's kind of curious. Like you've got more experience than me, but like, what is your like perception of the fish and like, like just the nature of the fish? Yeah. Uh, so I've noticed with Goliaths, uh, they really like like the slack tide. So like the tide switches. So generally, your best bet at catching Goliaths are on the tide switches, like on those bridges or anywhere really, because they're kind of just lazy fish. They kind of just sit in the current, you know, when it's ripping, and then once it slacks up, they kind of go around and they search and. Mm -hmm. Generally, when you get bites, but uh, Goliaths, um, I love catching them, they're awesome fish, yeah. You know? 
Um, I, I don't, I don't think they need to, uh, I think that little, uh, what was it? There's like a lottery, like five to let, to like keep them. You get like a little tiny baby yeah. slot five hundred yeah. <laughs> bucks to enter a lottery for it. Yeah. That, that, that's I'm not a big fan of that, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad they, uh, closed them back in, I like, guess, what was it? 1990. Mm-hmm. They're everywhere now. Like I've, yeah. I've caught, uh, there's a couple that I know I've caught multiple times, like just by comparing pictures, you know, and looking at their patterns and everything. Cause they're all different. You know, no two right. look, it's pretty cool. And they seem like they like, like to stay on the same spot. I know I've got a few yeah. spots. Like it's, it's funny you mentioned that. I know I've got a few spots down here in Naples and like different mangrove creeks where I'll go and catch the juveniles. You know, it's, it's, that's almost more fun than the big ones. Yeah. And, like the, the tight creeks. Oh yeah. Power. You catch them in like the little tight creeks out of a canoe or something. I mean, that's a blast. But yeah. I had a buddy of mine come down from Virginia and took him out to do it. And he caught one. Like, I mean, it's just instantaneous in this one little area. And got his photos. And then, um, you know, I happened to be looking at one of my photos and then his photo. And I went back and forth. I'm like, you know, this was from months apart. I'm like, yeah. it's the same damn fish from the exact same spot. So I think yeah. that that's probably a big reason why the ones on some parts of the causeway I, I think that, you know, you're just catching a lot of times you're just catching the same fish over and over, but yeah, you know, it's like the interesting thing to me is the idea of the ones that are out on the reefs that are eating everything. Like they're, they're like, they are yeah. the reason like they mm-hmm. are like, they're like, you know, the idea from especially anglers is that they are the reason that we're seeing less snappers. We're seeing less of the desired yeah. species. And I was kind of curious, think- like if you, if you buy into that idea or if you, uh yeah i always i I always hear that about like goliaths and sharks you know like the the two fish that i love going after the most like most people when they go out they want to go you know for eating fish Mm -hmm. but and then they want to blame it on you know the sharks and the goliaths for being less eating fish well the problem is people there's too many people taking a boatload of fish every day for however long you know it it adds up yeah, I think it's one of those things where people underestimate how smart, like, you know, it's they do definitely come off as a big idiot fish. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I remember, like, the biggest impression I had of Goliath was over on the East Coast. I was fishing with a buddy of mine, and we went out to this one wreck. And it was like, it's like the bait spot, this particular wreck. It's where, you know, yeah. a, lot of the, a lot of the charters and the captains and the what have you go out there to, to get bait, um, mm-hmm. great bait spot. But, uh, you know, people are fishing the wreck, too. But, dude, it was like, I mean, it's like clockwork. As soon as you pull up over over the top of this wreck, I think it's the same one you see all those YouTubers no, fishing okay. over the top of because the, the Goliaths that are, they are so conditioned to stealing baits like or stealing uh, catches. Yeah. Like, we would look over the edge of the boat, and you just see these shadowy things looking up at you. Like, they're waiting. Yeah. And I'm like, well... I think if they weren't so used to the easy meals coming their way, like, you know, it's almost kind of like the same that you see with alligators in certain areas down here. Yeah, they get, you know, they, they adapt, you know, right. what's easy, what's, you know, what's best. So I'm like, like a, lot the, a lot of the Goliaths I catch over here, like I have them, they, uh, they spit up crabs. A lot yeah. of the times the whole stone crabs, cause that's really all they could really catch right. by themselves, you know, just going around on the bottom. And I'm sure. A lot of times, you know, I put my bait out there it's sitting a good while, nothing's happening. I'm sure some crabs get on it and he sees yeah. the crabs and comes up and he probably smacks it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. The, the crabs are like an attractant to your yeah. bait. That's yeah, a good so, point. But my sure. impression, though, you know, as an outsider looking in with not a lot of saltwater experience, you know, I don't, I don't, I didn't have like the, I don't know, the preconceived ideas about a Goliath. I'm just there to make observations on my own. Yeah. And we're over the wreck. Man, there's boats everywhere around us. We, it was like it was like everything the guy I could do, like the guy I was with, it was everything he could do to like keep the boat in position, not bump into yeah. other boats. So I'm like looking around, I'm like, okay, are the Goliaths eating or everything? I mean, there's like I mean, I'm talking it's no mercy out there. The other the yeah. other boats. I'm like, people are pulling in everything left and right. But then at the same time, it's like I feel like if a Goliath sees you know, a snapper swim by normally, like in its natural state. They're mm-hmm. probably not chasing them. They're not fast. But if they see one that's on the end of a hook that's struggling and moving around, it's like it triggers that, like a different kind mm-hmm. of response. For sure. So I'm like, well, are they really eating everything? Or are they just, are you feeding the Goliaths at some point? It's like pretty much that, yeah. But, um, 
It's one of those interesting debates. I like to. I'd rather like sit on the outside and listen in on people who know what they're talking yeah. about with it. But yeah, like I've I've never really had to deal with like Goliath stealing my fish or anything like that. Like I've yet to experience that, but uh, they're definitely loaded over here. You know? Yeah. yeah. I think it's a bigger problem in some of those areas that are like really hammered by anglers. Like they yeah. just they've gotten to a point where they've patterned boats, and mm-hmm. they know that a boat like like to like what I just said is like we, when we pulled up the Goliaths came over and waited. They they knew it was like all right yeah. you're gonna you're gonna bring me my my meal. So yeah, the sharks do the same deal over there. Like you go on a boat over on the east coast, you're gonna see some sharks pull up next to your boat, and they want to see what you got. Yeah, yep. you catch anything. So I think it's more so that than them just swimming around eating everything in their path because you know yeah. I think I've kind yeah. of seen the same thing. It's like I think I think in their normal like in normal uh, circumstances they're eating mostly slow crab. moving like wait, wait, stupid bottom like, dwelling yeah. fish yeah and crabs <laughs> yeah. but um but yeah so that's interesting I've seen videos of uh some guy fishing off of like a bridge i think it was in fort myers but he saw a, a goliath grab like a big cow nose and in the video you could see the goliath like straight down over the bridge you could just see like the back end of this cow nose just sticking out of this thing's mouth yeah <laughs> <laughs> So they're really just opportunistic, you know, they'll eat whatever. Right. Well, I think they're that's probably just their problem. role in the ecosystem. Yeah. They're like the cleanup crew. They're there to yeah. just grab the slow and unweary and stupid yeah. animals and population control, I guess. But yeah. um, it's just an awesome, it's just one of those fish. that's kind of like, man, you can't help, but like when you go to like the aquarium and you got all these yeah. different fish in the tank, it's like, everybody's going to sit there and want to stare at the big grouper that's yeah. in there. But just um, like a, giant bass you know everyone's first fish is usually a bass and that's yeah. just like the and i think that's like I, I think that's like part of the allure of the fish is that it resembles a bass so much like the, the body structure bass, like so yeah <laughs> but um they get so, huge like for you what i mean what would you say is like the biggest one that you've caught or encountered or seen caught or maybe lost uh, like I hear stories of like they get up to eight hundred pounds, but I, I don't know. I kind of find that hard to believe. Like yeah, I, I agree. I, we catch like we don't weigh them. Obviously, we just kind of estimate. So I would estimate like the biggest ones I've seen are probably like in the the four hundred to five hundred range. Probably like four fifty. Yeah, that seems to be the biggest I've seen, and they're they're huge. They're like six foot long with like a four foot girth. You know, like it's oh, big. God, yeah, but it's hard to believe. Like picture an eight hundred pounder though. But I know. I've know. seen that too. It's, I guess it's possible. There's always those like crazy outliers of every fish. It's like, what? That's a, things in a yeah. whole other category. But I'm sure there's you know. a giant one out there like that somewhere. But yeah. I, I, think it's, I think it's amazing how much water those things can push with that big old tail. It's like when, you're, yeah. when, you, start, when you start to get them in close and it looks like manatee swirls. Yeah, I've been playing with this. Jeez. my gopro a little bit just like taking videos of them underwater and you can see it's just it's basically just like a giant broom tail mm-hmm. <laughs> it's pretty cool but um yeah i don't know is i mean so your interest is probably i mean i see that you do a lot of the the land-based shark fishing th- thing too yeah. are you, you kind of probably lean more into the shark thing or are you just cool uh, with- well, it's, it's i do love catching big sharks more uh just sharks in general more just because the fight like the sharks doing most of the work most of the time he's just running you know and then you gotta gain on yeah. <laughs> with the goliaths like don't get me wrong they're fun but after like there's some nights you go out there you hook four or five and you keep hooking them you're like oh that's another goliath i they know. Just, you know they kind of sit there and you have you have to really do the work and just yeah. drink them dead weight most of the time but I know, I feel like a giant ray or something, but I agree it, it, the few times i've gone and done it, it's like i it's usually like one of those one and done things for me Unless yeah. I get like kind of like it's too small, I'm like ah, I gotta get a bigger one. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Normally, after you get about one, I'm like ah, I'm going home. I'm done. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but but definitely, I also, uh, prefer catching uh, sharks. I don't know. It just excites me. Big sharks excite me. What's yeah? I think it's a more dynamic fight because they're actually like I've never had a Goliath really peel off like drag. I mean, they're yeah, not. They're, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like they could. They pull a drag, but it's not like fast, you know how like yeah. a shark would like you hook into a big hammerhead, it's like you just hooked into a moving car going forty miles an hour. Like it's like what what? Right. <laughs> you know, we don't know what to do. Well, one of the ones that I've seen on your page that obviously was an attention grabber is is the big sawfish. Yeah. I saw I saw a photo of a big 
it looks like a big one too. I mean, tell me a little bit about that. Have you caught more than one or is that yeah, just sort of like, you know, you I get out there long that. enough, you just get lucky, I guess. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, at this spot I caught him at, uh, no one's ever heard of anyone ever catching sawfish out there. So I, uh-huh. I was amazed and everyone else, you know, that I fished with was, was amazed by it, obviously. But I caught my first one. It was like last April. Um, and I just, it was just on a little tiny bait. Once again, a little small chunk of ladyfish, literally that big. Yeah. And it, all I did was cast it out. There was a good bit of pe- people at the spot we fished at that night. There's like two groups of people on each side set mm-hmm. up. Nobody had a bait out though. So I was like, all right, I'm going to put something out, you know, I'm trying to cut, <laughs> What you were know, they waiting for? Out there. Yeah. The right tide? There. Yeah. I think, I think the, the, the tide was just ripping the wrong way. Oh, okay. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to fire one out there. You never know. Yeah, and the tide was ripping out. You know, my rods like bent over, just barely hanging out of the bottom. And I I heard like I had my drag pretty tight, and I heard it go steady. I'm like, what is that? You know, it kind of surprised me. <laughs> yeah. And the whole time I was thinking like big Goliath, like just kind of how it fought because sawfish fight really unique. Like you hook into them, and they dump like a shark. Like it's like yeah, big run, big run, and then at some point he just stops. And you're oh, like, that's interesting. What did I get stuck? Did I get like rocked up? And you're sitting on it, giving it all you got, like just trying to move it. I think I passed it around to like two of my friends to like just try and move it, just put pressure on it. And it took like three guys to get finally get them up and off the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> and then if it wasn't for two speed on that reel I had, I don't think I would have been able to get that thing in. And you just winch them little by little. Yeah. Cause they're almost like, I don't know. It's like if you took a, they're sort of built like a ray on the front yeah, end. The way they act, like the way they swim and the way their mouth is and how they can yeah. stick to the bottom is like a ray. But they're giant and I mean the body's like a shark. I mean, that's another like, one. That's another cool. one when I when I see those photos and they're in the shallows, like at some point you had to get in there, I guess, to get to the oh, ray. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, what yeah, was that like? Oh, it was intense, but it, it was awesome at the same time. You know, biggest yeah. adrenaline rush. But uh, <laughs> after bringing them in, the, you know, the, they look at you and they know they know what their one little defense is. So uh, this uh-huh. whole time I'm trying to do this, <laughs> yeah. thirteen footer. I got it on video of it swinging its saw back and forth, and the thing is able to basically do like a whole one eighty and just turn all the way around on you if it wants to. Jeez. Yeah. So, and that so was how awesome. did you how do you get to the rig? You just kind of go for it and have to risk it. Yeah, I mean the it's it they have like a stingray mouse, you know, it's all the way up at the bottom. There's yeah. really no safe way to get to it. So we pretty much just took wire cutters. My buddy Austin did it. Yeah. Uh and he uh just got as close as he could and just nipped it like right next to the jaw. And they're both hooked in the corner, so eventually, you know, it'll work its way out. It was a smaller circle hook, it'll be good. Yeah, it makes sense because I look at that. I'm like, I don't know how anybody ever gets the hook out. I don't think I just I think you just can't. But it also nah. seems like their rostrum ends up getting tangled in the in the rig and tangled yeah, in the. Just, it's just not worth it. it it's not yeah. worth putting stress on them of trying to get it out and yep. everything. You know, they they really are like the most endangered marine fish in the whole world. Like if you Google it, you know, like they've been around. They yeah. could estimate there's as few as like 500, as many as 2,000 in the whole world, and they pretty much only live like in our little part of Florida. Yeah. And That's one of those ones that it's like, man, I, I do not want to go to my grave before seeing one. I wanted to, I just want to like see one in person. Yeah. It's such a cool looking I, animal, but yeah. It was yeah, amazing. my wife, uh, my wife had seen them in the Caloosahatchee River, like way up river. She was paddleboarding yeah. out behind her house and saw like the young little, the, you know, the blue pups. Of the- a lot of the small ones, you know, they swimming move into, together, like two of them together. I was like, that's an interesting yeah, behavior. Like, that's cool. I hear a lot of like the small ones up on the flats, and then like both of those big sawfish I caught. Like the first one was probably like thirteen feet, and then like a month later, the other one was probably like eleven and a half, twelve foot. They're they're both males in the same spot. My guess was they were heading up inshore to to spawn. Yeah, you know, because it was like springtime and. You know, like you say, all the way up in the in the inshore waters, that's where you, you know come into contact with sawfish, small ones, you know. And the yeah, big those boys, things are they those things are nuts. <laughs> yeah, I saw three of them last year. I mean, I saw one more other person hook one off the pier here in Venice. I ended mm-hmm. up breaking it off, but that's three big sawfish I saw last spring. Like I've never seen one before that. You know, all right? Pretty cool. Hopefully, more and more. Yeah, yeah, those things are. That's one of those ones. It's like it's always like the, the one that'll keep you from scrolling too much. You know, you can swipe and look through yeah. people's pictures. Like, oh man, like dang, like, uh, 
<laughs> but you can't, yeah, but you can't go after them. It's just like I don't know. You put baits out there and maybe secretly hope to yeah, get to see, to see get something. But... That's it, <laughs> right? <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't planning on you know catching one of those that night. It just happened. Yeah. Well, I haven't even messed around on the beaches around here ever since the storm. I just yeah, I it, it's, it's been sucky. Like you know, I said I went over to the East Coast last. Uh, I mean, yesterday it's because the red tide. Like we keep getting red tide popping yeah. up every. time. Get a freaking cold front nowadays. Yeah, so, and the water's just been nasty out there. There's all yeah. kinds of crap floating around. Yeah, it's terrible. But maybe next year. I like I like doing it on Sanibel. Occasionally, I'll go a little further north than that. But but anyway, do you do do you ever do the glide stuff from the bridges, or are you just strictly dropping baits? Like like I I prefer to just do it off the beach. But like uh, when I first started fishing down here, I was fishing for them a good bit off bridges and stuff. And there's this there's this one bridge I go to. They sit on the uh, like the 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 two channels there's like big lights on both the the what are they called the fenders mm-hmm. yeah and uh there's probably three or four like 300 plus pound goliaths just sitting in the light cruising waiting yeah <laughs> you know but it's just cool to see them like that you don't always see that right big fish light it's pretty well, much I, don't, I, I could sit here and talk about the big giant ones this whole time but then i saw you know when i when i was looking through your page that it like it goes like from you know these goliaths and tarpon and sharks and sawfish and then all of a sudden it's like smallmouth bass and like bass fishing yeah. so it's like is that is that home to you is like yeah that's that's what i grew up doing I, I grew up in ohio uh okay no one in my family really fished like at all so i didn't yeah. have really anybody to like teach me but you know here son like, but uh my mom she moved uh <laughs> She moved. She moved to a pond when I was next to a pond when I was like twelve, and I think she took me to Walmart one day, and I got me, a, you know, a nice little push button pole, and then there went you out go. to the pond, <laughs> and we caught some bluegill, and I thought that was cool, and then I would go out there every day, you know, and I'd be like, "Hey, ma, I went out and caught a hundred bluegill today," <laughs> you know, I would level up from there. I'm like, "All right, I'm gonna go catch some bass now." Yeah. <laughs> and then I remember when I first saw the uh, like carp in the pond, mm. like grass carp. Yeah. I, I was, <laughs> what is that like it looks like a shark i would see like you know the big shadows of them out in the pond i was like all right i gotta catch one of those and so you know i would go out and there's little like berries that would drop in the pond i couldn't figure out how to catch carp because i'm like what how do i catch carp they don't eat you know they don't eat like throwing spinner baits at them and stuff yeah Yeah. don't do that (laughs) and so i was like reading up on my bread bread like bread Mm -hmm. won't work the bluegills will chew it up and so you know i'm just it taught me like a big lesson in fishing is you always be observant of what's around you. Like you can't just read everything that you're going to want to know. And, uh, but basically like there's these little berries that go out in the pond and they float. And so I would just hook a little berry on my push button pole, cast her out there. You know, I'd catch like, I caught like a nice grass carp. And from there, you know, you just kind of work out from there. Like when, right. I was in, <laughs> when I was in high school and whatnot, uh, I was big and me and my friend Luke, we used to do, uh, like, uh, the bass fishing tournaments like because mm-hmm. that's all we really had up there was you know the bass fishing and uh so that's what we did up there and then um my friend luke the same one that i used to always fish with back in high school he brought me down here i want to say we were like probably 15 and i just came down here with his family uh i think we went to Anna maria island mm-hmm. and like that was the first time i really got to experience like florida fishing like, we were catching snook off the beach yeah <laughs> little tiny sharks that were like this big but i thought it was so cool right yeah <laughs> we, we go out you know we went on a charter boat and we just fished in shore a little bit i was just loving it you know and at that point i was like that's like 10 times more exciting to me than going bass fishing because yeah out here you don't know what you're gonna catch you don't know even like what to expect every, yeah. I mean, every day it's always different and so uh i kind of got into shark fishing i want to say i was like 16 or 17 you know, and I I would always watch, you know, YouTube videos, even you, know, you know, I'm seeing all these people catch big fish from the beach and I'm like, Oh, why couldn't I do that? You know? Yeah. And so I was just doing my research on everything I could, you know, about like just this was just like basics, like just a casting rod, you're going to the beach, catching like a little white and cutting it up and putting it out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I, I think we uh, my we went to like Hilton Head, South Carolina. Okay. Just like with the family. Yeah, and, I'm I'm from uh, South Carolina. I know that area. Okay pretty well cool, cool. yeah so well, i was just going out there i bought like a 40 dollar amazon rod 
Yeah. <laughs> and like a little cheap reel. And I was just going out there casting whatever I could, catching, you know, little black tips and stuff. And like the next year I came back, caught like a nice lemon shark. And I just knew like that was the type of fishing that really excites me because like it, I don't know how you, it could ever get old, you know, like there's yeah. so many things you could do and so many things that could happen. It's really never the same thing twice. Right. You know? No, I always like those stories of like the like the progression as an angler, especially because that's like a, my history is probably similar to yours. Like you were sort of just doing it on your own. Yeah, I feel like, like a lot of the, I feel like a lot of the guys that start like that, where you're just like learning yourself. Not that like it's good to have mentors, mm -hmm. but a lot of the people where it was like their grandpa's grandpa's grandpa taught them, and it's like they they all sort of yeah. I don't know. Ironically, those seem to be the people who don't like. I don't know. They just stay in one like little category yeah. of fishing. Yeah, you. I mean, the the probably the best piece of advice I would have for like learning stuff from people and fishing is like um, meet people that actually do it themselves. You know, yeah. Pe people that could show you something different. Not yeah. You know, you don't always want to be the guy teaching people. You want to get. You know, it's good right. to go out, ask questions, and you know, learn from yeah. people that have done it. I think it's always good too to like approach everybody's like input with a little bit of skepticism because yeah, I like yeah, I had just for whatever don't. like the like the carp <laughs> thing is a good example. Um, you know, you could have very easily had somebody be like, "Oh, you don't want to catch carp? That's a trash fish." But uh, my I remember uh, hearing that, and I was like, "What do you mean? That's the biggest fish in the pond? What are you talking yeah, about? It's a forty pound fish. I don't care yeah, what it is. That's a, that's a monster." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I vividly remember when I was first coming up fishing, like when it was first becoming a thing for me, like we would go to this golf course ponds, me and my brothers, and it was bluegill and bass. Mm -hmm. And like, that's what everybody's just what it was. It's like, you have to catch bluegill and bass. I'm like, yeah, I mean, this is okay. You know, I just wasn't sold on fishing yet. And it was a graph for me. It was kind of the same thing. It was a grass carp that I saw in like the margins of this golf course pond, I just see these scales. Like yeah. it didn't even register to me that it was a fish. I just see this big round mass with mm -hmm. scale pattern. And like, I'm like, it didn't even, like my brain didn't process that I was looking at a living animal. And then I just see the scales moving. And that was like the yeah. first time I saw a carp. I'm like, I've got to catch <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. And but, then uh, I mean, they, they look a lot like a tarpon just because like, you yeah. know, they're big scales, like something about the big scales gravitates me towards it you know right <laughs> and then you just go on this endless quest from there of not being able to be mm -hmm. satisfied with a smaller fish and you yep. before you know it you're catching 400 pound goliath grouper hey you just, but, gotta, keep uh, <laughs> you just yeah. gotta keep going yeah well where are you gonna go from here it's like i don't know i i love to know like you're already doing something pretty casually like you're rattling this whole goliath thing off pretty casually and I don't know if you've had similar, like I had done like a little bit of Goliath stuff and wrote about it and blogged about it. And I get, mm -hmm. I even still every now and then I'll get somebody out of the blue that just messages me that really wants to go and do this. Like, do you kind of get the same thing? Like people like it's people are all about the Goliath. So like you're doing something yeah. sort of casually that's on a lot of people's like bucket list. Yeah. I mean, we, we catch them a lot. And like whenever I have someone down here that I know, like from school or whatever, I love to take them down. You know, I have people that uh, from out of state that like they found my Instagram, and, you know, and they just message me like, "Hey, you have to be take me out fishing. I'll pay you, you know, however much, and oh, yeah. you know, we'll go out." <laughs> I'm like, "All right, good deal," you know, because all right, <laughs> regardless of being paid or not, I I I really just love showing people, you know, something they've never seen before, or something that yeah, I so much of, you know, like it's always fun to bring someone else, get their reaction of it, you know. Well, do you have uh, anything, like, I don't know, lined up or, in, in, like, uh, well, do you have like, anything personally, plan? like, I mean, like, something, like, for yourself. Do you have anything that's like, all right, I want to make a trip for myself. Like, is there anything on your bucket list? Oh, we're gonna like, be talking about? For, yeah. like uh, for, like, land-based fishing or just, like, fishing in general? Well, anything. Well, I think uh, I'm going to try and make a trip to Hawaii this year with uh, my friend Jen from... Uh, he lives in California. He's one of the guys that calls me up and he, you know, he comes fishing whenever he's in town. Yeah, that's he, cool. He just, he just found my Instagram a couple of years ago, you know, and whenever he's around, I take him and he goes on crazy trips all over the place. Like he goes to like to go fishing in Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like the Marlin fishing, like on yeah. boats, go, uh, fit, I guess they had GTs over there off the rocks. Like they mm, catch, oh yeah. Yeah. They got some. They got some interesting spots up there where it's like uh, I might be wrong, but I think they might have somewhere it's like 
I don't want to say like locals only, but like I've watched a few of the videos there where they catch real giant ones. And I don't know if it's like how many people can get out there. Yeah. Yeah. GTs. Uh, that's an easy sell right there. That's on like everybody's bucket list there. Yeah. GTs are cool. There, there's, a, there's so many places that like I want to go and just, you know, visit and fish. Like I could, I could start rattling them off. I know. know. I get, I get Australia. that same way too. Yeah. I got to go there someday. Oh yeah. That's yeah, a that's, special place. That's another one. I got to slow my roll sometimes because like, you know, you think about where we live right now, even in Southwest Florida is like, we live in a pretty awesome spot. I mean, we're in paradise and I find myself all the time thinking of like, where can I go this year? That's not Florida. I'm like, I need to like, yeah. I haven't even caught a big tarpon yet. Like I've had a couple shots at them and they like gotten off and they've just like yeah. kicked my tail. You ever all get right. out during, during a, like tarpon season? Like on boats? No, no, that's my thing is like, I, I don't have, I had a boat when I first moved down here and then we sold it. So now I'm like pretty much resigned myself to be in a canoe angler for a while. And, uh, I'm, and I, I people that catch them out of the canoe. I do too. But, I do too. And I really, yeah. I want to link. I know. I, well, I had had one shot at it one night and it's, it's funny. Like I'll go up in like the peace river and try to catch there's big ones there. There's, there's big ones up in the rivers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but all that ever happens to me is I get smoked by the little bull sharks just take all my bait. Yeah. And then, um, ironically, I went out on the Caloosahatchee not that long ago, and I wanted to catch the bull sharks. I was like, oh, I'm just going to go out and play around with these little bull shark pups. And I ended up hooking a big old giant tarpon out of my canoe. And this thing just, it just destroyed yeah. me. I didn't even come close. But, uh, and then we did, me and my brother went out with a charter one time out in Boca, like, you know, Boca Grand Pass. And, yeah. I don't know, man. Like that one just wasn't for me. Like it just wasn't my style. I don't know. I, like we hooked them left and right and they're all coming off and they're all taking us down into the school and breaking yeah. us off in the school. Well, I feel like uh, fishing in Boca Pass would be just a pain because of how it many boats wasn't. there are. There was boats all around us. Like people's tarping yeah. are jumping in other people's boats. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like Typically kinda... when I've done it, it's like we're fishing off like the open beach. You're really just cruising the beach and you're looking for the rollers. Yeah. Okay where they're coming you know you get set up anchor up or throw motor down or whatever and you pretty much just kind of get ahead of wherever they're they're coming mm -hmm. you kind of need to just throw it out and hope that they run into your bait because yeah they're not like any other fish where like they see it and they'll chase it down like they're not going to work for it if it's in the face you're just gonna suck it I in know, I, I need to slow my roll and, and and knock off some of the fish we have around here but i end up getting ahead of myself and start dreaming passing up all the awesome fishing we have here for that. But yeah. I'm always curious about that. I'm always curious like where people start as a fisherman and then like talking obviously about where they're at now and then like thinking about, you know, where they're going, going forward. But, uh, yeah, dude, the Goliath stuff. Every time I look at your pictures, I'm like, I'm like, geez, this dude, this dude's got them figured out. You got pictures where you're holding like more than one of them at a, at the oh, same yeah, time. Got, doubles. I and... have five pictures <laughs> of two, two big ones side oh, by yeah. side same time you know <laughs> how do you make that happen are you dropping it like right on i mean how are you keeping them off the top of each other uh like how i said those weights earlier like those anchor weights mm -hmm. i use the spot i fish has a lot of heavy current and we're basically fishing like it blows side to side so you're, you're gonna need something to hold it down and we kayak yeah. it out just space them out evenly and yeah. whenever like say you hook up and the fish moves right or the left. You just kind of need to gauge like if he's over or under the other line, make sure, you know, they don't get tangled up. That's something you deal with a lot. You don't have issues with those grappling hooks getting stuck on all the crap on the bottom? No, not really, honestly. It's, they generally come out, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd play it around with the, like, the breakaway weights and, like, the bricks and the rocks, but, yeah, yeah you're right. They Sometimes it's... I don't like them. Yeah, well, I, especially I when the current or or you get grass, it just ends up taking it away. Or you get but. you get or you get one bite and then you're disconnected from your from yeah, your weight yeah. <laughs> doing whatever it wants out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seen that happen plenty of time. And you gotta carry a giant brick out to the beach with you, which you already got yeah. enough <laughs> weight as is as is, man. I don't I don't wanna carry thirty pounds of brick. I've got a a couple of my spots you can find my stockpiles. I got them I've got them little stockpiles next to yeah. where I usually fish, but but you're right in the areas where the where the current's really pushing through. Mm -hmm. not worth it. I also it. feel like it helps uh, with the Goliaths because I feel like with the breakaways it might get it might weird them out sometimes because like think about how your bait's sitting on the bottom like you got your bait I mean your your big breakaway on the bottom mm -hmm. however long your mono is yeah and connected to your hook so your bait's just kind of like 
floating above the bottom. Yeah. So it, it looks, looks just so suspicious weird. enough. It just looks a little weird. And like when they just think about it, when they come up and grab it, I'm sure they feel that line just dangling off. Uh huh. To the bait, you know, like I guess that, if I'm you're, sure. I guess especially if you're tied to the hook or to there, maybe yeah. if you tie it off higher, but then you're just going to get your bait just spindles yeah. around the. Yeah. Uh, like with the hookers I use, I have them on like a sliding snap swivel. So like mm -hmm. it's locked into the, to the bottom. But the fish grabs it. He's pulling it away. He's not feeling that weight at all until yeah. he gets to the, yep. to the leader. And by then, they don't really care. Yeah. Are you ever doing it by yourself? Are you ever? Uh, are you usually with yeah, a guy? I'm, usually with a crew? Sometimes, whenever I can't, whenever none of the boys want to come out, I yeah. end up being by myself. <laughs> but generally, like whenever I go shark fishing and goliath fishing, I like to have at least one other person with me just to help you know land in it or mm -hmm. taking nice pictures or whatever. It, it sucks to catch a nice fish, and you're like, oh well. Guess I'll let him go now. I can't really yeah, take no. <laughs> with him or nothing. Well, but then yeah. you also we're got to worry about after you drop your bait, you got to paddle, paddle real damn quick back. Yeah, they they pick it up and yeah, doesn't take them long to get back in the in the mess. But and even just lugging all the all the gear out there and everything, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, at least two people. But you can do it by yourself. It's just you better be ready to work for it. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Well, dude, I know we've been sitting here talking about all these giant fish and, and like the Goliath things, you know, that's, a, I know it's on interest of a lot of people who may be listening or people yeah. who, uh, uh, I don't know. I feel like that's a, that's a one that's really catching. I get a lot of the European guys that reach out to me about specifically about the Goliaths and the guys love mm -hmm. to fish from, from the land and catch the biggest fish from the land. But like people who want to see these photos come tell you like the photos you have are, are awesome. Like they're the, <laughs> that's the thing about the Goliaths. They make like the best picture. They make like the yeah, grass. They, the, they just look awesome. They got the yeah. big spot, big mouth. Well, that's they, pretty much all they're good for, I think. Is like yeah. you know they make a great photo, but yeah. um, but I don't know anybody who uh who, who's listening that wants to find these photos and, and like see your stuff. Like where would they be able to find you? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. It's just uh, Gavin dot Scholes. It's uh, Gavin dot S C H U L Z, and uh, I've been playing around with TikTok a little bit. Just you know you putting go. together a bunch of videos and clips I have. So I haven't I haven't treaded into that TikTok territory yet, but but yeah, my brother yeah, my brother's I'm, always sending me TikToks. I'm like, I don't have it. I can't yeah. see it. Yeah, I'm not Maybe the I need to get on board. It, but it's easy to make cool little snippet videos to yeah. deal with. I'm not the biggest user of it, but yeah. Or um that. yeah. Pretty much my Instagram is where I put all my all my cool stuff. Yeah. Well, it's awesome stuff, and I'll end up putting the link up on the video and the description and all that because it's like people are listening it's one of the listen I mean, people need to like see these photos they're all and i'll throw some of the pictures up too because okay, they're sure. they're awesome stuff but uh man I, I appreciate you coming on here i bet you want to catch up on some more of that sleep because three hours yeah. three and a half hours yeah. ain't enough I'll, catch up. I'll be all right yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's grinding it, it gets harder and harder as time goes on to to do that i think so oh i bet I, I, it'd be hard to do this not, type of i'm fish. not an old guy i'm just i'm just saying oh, yeah. Like one, this type of fishing is not easy. Like it, yeah. well, it'd be hard to do this past forty. I would think it'd be tough. <laughs> as much as I do it, uh, it'd be oh, yeah. tough. Well, that's awesome stuff, dude. I don't know. I'll have to reach out to you uh, uh, off the record. Maybe we can link up sometime. Yeah, We're both Southwest no, Florida. I'd, I'd I'd both Southwest Florida. Yeah. And, and if any of you guys don't want to link up out there and, and and join you, I'd be happy to. Because I, I don't know. It's been like a solid year since last time I played tug of war with a goliath i'm kind of eager to get out there and mess around with them again sometime so yeah man i'll let you know like whenever the water cleans up we're getting up here you can come up with yeah it should be good for you know a good minute once it cleans yeah. up all right dude well i appreciate having you on here yeah we'll man. be in Thanks touch for having me. have right, fun man. talking to you yeah dude take it easy you too man see you later thank you for listening to the boundless pursuit podcast if you enjoyed this show, your feedback, comments, and reviews are very important to me. Also, this podcast is just one element to a much bigger content outlet. I urge you to head over to www.haverodswilltravel.com where you'll find audio, visual, and written editorial content. That is three dimensions of awesome fishing content brought to you by a very dynamic team of anglers. I hope that you'll tune in next week as we continue to build this program and have interesting and skilled anglers each Thursday. Thank you for listening.